Hello everyone, and let me just give you a number to start out with. $64,002. $64,002. That's the starting salary, the average starting salary for programmers here in the United States. Hi everybody, I'm JP and welcome to Pasco Laboratories. Today, the P stands for programmers and the reason it stands for programmers is because we are celebrating something wonderful and I'm celebrating it today with Heidi who's joining me in the big celebration. Heidi, what's the big celebration? It's Hour of Code Week! It's Hour of Code Week. That's right, it's Hour of Code Week where we take this entire week and focus on all the great things you can do with coding, all the great opportunities that are available. Now I said $64,000, that, that was a starting salary for programmers here in the United States. Now we're here, Pasco Laboratories, we're based mm -hmm. in California. What do you think the starting salary is here in California for a programmer? Ooh, California, it's gotta be a little bit higher, especially with uh everything going on. I would maybe 70,000? Yeah, you're pretty close. Huh? Yeah. Starting salary is $75,000 right here in California. So, programming is really something awesome. And it's actually very easy to do and I know our kids are all yeah. doing it anyway. Yeah. Everybody's programming, everybody likes to code. There's great opportunities to do it and here at Pasco Laboratories, we're finding ways to bring coding to you. So, if you're locked up, locked down inside like we are, you just might want to do some coding and we have an opportunity to do that for you. In fact, we've got free software that you can use yep. today and start coding. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that, Heidi? I think it's pretty awesome. Why don't you show them how awesome that is? <laughs> I certainly will. So in honor of Hour of Code, we wanted to show you some things that somebody who's never coded before could do. So you could go to pasco.com, you can download our free software, and I'm gonna show you using SparkView, Blockly and SparkView, uh, how you can get started. Okay, I'm going to follow along with okay. you so that we'll be doing this together. And Great. you can do this at home. Of course, these things are all recorded. You can take a look at Pasco and uh, Pasco Live. You'll find this recorded for you. And if you're not following it, you can't do it real quickly following today. Just watch the recorded version and start coding right away. All right, let's do it. Mm -hmm. All right, so here I am at the um, beginning screen and I'm going to click on build new experiment for this one because right now I'm not connecting to any sensors whatsoever. I'm just using the program itself. I'm just going to go ahead and choose any template I want. And then at the bottom right, you'll see that little code puzzle piece. Mm -hmm. That's, That's how you that get into Blockly. Up. Sure. All right. All right. So the main function with Blockly is it will give you text or numerical output. So let's try just doing a simple message. To do that, you have to create it. So I'm clicking on code output, create text. And I'm just going to give it an easy name to remember because I'm going to have to recall it later um, in my program. So it just says message and there are blocks created. So I want to just say, hi, my name is Heidi. Pretty simple, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to see that program run, you go back to the code puzzle piece. I see it there. I'm just going to click this digits display, the one, two, three, and you'll see select measurement on the top right. When I click that, I see either sensors, which I don't have anything connected right now, um, or user entered. So I'm going to pick user entered. And because that's what we yep. did. We were the user. We entered that name. Mm -hmm. That's the name I see here. I see it on mine too. The, it's message. Yep. Okay. So I click that and right now it's nothing. So I have to execute my program. So look, here we go. Mm -hmm. Ah, there it is. Hi, my name is Heidi. And of course mine said, hi, my name is JP because I coded it that oh, way. Excellent, uh -huh. all right. So I'm gonna go back to the code puzzle piece because I wanna add to this now. I'm gonna put two more statements in there. You can either click the code output and pull out another block or you can right click to duplicate, which I think is really awesome, especially when you start getting into more intricate programs. So let's say hi. And on my Apple, I'm able to do Control C. Oh, I can, yep, okay. I can I'm glad you said C that. And Control V, I'm able to copy and paste using that uh, as well as right click. So let's say hi. My name is Heidi. Nice to meet you. And end with let's get coding. All right, back to the puzzle piece, and I'm gonna click Execute. 
Mm-hmm. Whoa. Oh. That, um, oh. that happened uh, so quickly. No, I, I saw it, mm-hmm. but it happened way too quickly for me to, to actually capture. Yeah, actually, it happened so fast on mine that it skipped the whole middle phrase. It just said, hi, my name is Heidi. Let's get coding. So I'm going to go back to that code. Got to slow this down a little bit. Yeah. So let's talk about the sleep blocks. So I'm mm. going to go to time mm-hmm. and pull one of those out. Let's make it about a thousand milliseconds. A thousand milliseconds, which is equivalent. So, all right. So I'm putting one mm-hmm. second for sleep in. So. And I'm putting three in. I'm putting it ah. after each statement. So it should pause or sleep, mm-hmm. pause for one second after we see each one of yeah. those. Okay. Let me try. All right, right. let's see if it worked. Mm -hmm. Back to the code. Execute. Ah. Much better. Much better. Mm -hmm. But I want you to now notice that I clicked execute and it just ran through once and the program stopped. And I want this to keep doing this. Mm -hmm. I I want it to be an ongoing thing on my computer. So? Right, so back to the code. Mm -hmm. Now let's pull in a loop. So a lot of the loops that I've been using recently, the two biggest ones are repeat and repeat while. So I want to use the one that says repeat 10 times the top. Mm -hmm. And I can can change that number. Yeah, Uh you absolutely can. So I'm just going to put three. So if everything's good, it's going to run through those three statements three times. Okay. All right, let's see how it works. There's one, One, two, two, and awesome. Three. Work yep. for you? App sure did. Okay, yep. same Works thing. For me too. Three times through. So, what you just showed me now is an opportunity to do some coding, direct coding, and all I'm doing is having my computer relay some simple output, in this case, some text. But here in Pasco Laboratories, we like to do things with data and sensors. And really, the world of coding right now is all about sensors. You know, your car is full of sensors, uh, just about every device we have at home is full of sensors. and Oddly, surprisingly, even our phone is full of sensors and we can use that data and our coding ability to, to do some really neat stuff. Yes? Yeah, absolutely. So okay. like I am going to open a program that I did for fun to get out of the office for mm-hmm. a little bit the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, so let me find it real quick. Walk back. Okay. So you should be able to see my phone. Mm -hmm. And let me start here. I'm going to show you how to get all this to this in a second to create a really fun program, but let's first talk about the data. So the onboard sensor that I'm using on my Android uh, is my GPS where I can measure my speed. And you'll be able to do that soon with the iPhone too. So Mm -hmm. just know that that's coming. So if you look here, what do you see? I see that your speed has been recorded on your walk and it's actually tracked you. Yeah. Um, Which is a little spooky, actually, because it appears that your phone is uh, kind of watching you almost, isn't it? Yeah. Do you get those Google alerts every month where you can see all the places you've been the last 30 days? Yes, your phone really is watching you. And in this case, it's actually watching where you've been and how fast you're moving. And I love that it has a map of the area. So the first time I took this nature walk, I didn't really know how far it went. Um, Where you're seeing where I stopped, there's a nice little bridge. So what we do when we go for our walk is we go to it, we tap it and turn around and come back. So there's your map view using GPS, which is so awesome. But let me show you the data that I collected because that's a really great thing about Blockly is you're inputting data and using that as a condition for your program to do something. To so using something. the GPS in this case, it, it's monitoring where you've been. Mm-hmm. And since it knows where you're going, it, it's actually capturing your speed. I see here it's meters per second, which is definitely speed. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so it, it knows yeah. how fast you're going. Yeah, so I kind of hovered around the 1.4 meters per second. Wasn't walking real fast. Well, mm-hmm. we know being cooped up inside so much, it's important to get outside. So sure. the walk's great, but how can I maximize that with, you know, not being able to hit the gym while well, getting my heart rate up is what I really want to do. So I've collected my data so I know my pace because my pace will be different from yours. Sure. And I want to challenge myself to walk briskly at least 1.6 meters per second. That's oh, my Oh, a little goal. bit faster than what you're doing That's here. That's my motivation. And you want to maintain that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let me show you from the beginning how I can create an awesome program utilizing the data that I collected first. Okay. That's the important piece. So I'm going to... Sure. So we're going to code now 
an experiment or we're going to code for that sensor data to, to give me some kind of output. Yeah, okay. so I went back, I'm starting a new experiment because I wanted you to see how you connect to the onboard sensors on your phone. So I click sensor data this time and look at all those onboard sensors that are on my phone. Right, yes, I see those on mine also. And yes, so these are all things that I can measure and that I can capture and I can mm -hmm. use in developing a code. Yep. Um, interesting, and I see uh, onboard GPS and of course acceleration. In this case, you're using the onboard GPS. Yes, so I clicked on that to enable it and then I'm gonna click on speed. So when I do that and I choose the line graph, I see now that I'm gonna be recording my speed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to see a map, what I did before, I click on a template, and you see that little world that's got the location symbol? Mm -hmm. When you click on that, it's uh, going to give yeah, me the map view. Yeah, okay. it'll give you the map view for wherever you're at. So let's create that program I talked about, the motivator. So I'm going to click on the code, and let's start with a loop. This time I'm going to use repeat while true. And this just means it's going to run through the program over and over and over again until mm -hmm. I tell it to stop by clicking mm -hmm. the stop button. I'll make that a little bit bigger. And we haven't done this yet, but now I'm going to pull in my conditional piece. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. my this, logic. this is telling me what to do, when to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is where I'm going to put in the sensor I'm going to utilize. So I'm going to pull this comparison block out. It says equal. And now I go to hardware. You see that first one that's mm -hmm. lit up? Pull mm -hmm. that out. Now, did we use latitude? No. What was the focus We for were us? using speed. All right, so if you just click that drop down menu, it mm -hmm. can pull you right up to speed. Ha <laughs> ha, get it? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Cute. <laughs> All right. right, and then I'm going to pull a math block out because this is where I'm going to set. Remember, I said I want to stay above 1.6 meters per second. So if my speed is greater than, click on that so I can adjust it. I'm going to say 1.6 for me. You probably mm -hmm. walk faster than mm -hmm. I do. Yep, possible. I'd have to check my own data, but, but we'll go with your 1.6 okay. on what I'm building. All right. So again, right now I'm just going to do a text output. I could do numerical, but I want that motivation statement. So I'm going to click on code output again and create text. Um, I could say message, motivator, whatever I want to call it. I'm just going to say message for now. And I can pull this out. So if I'm going above 1.6, I'm going to say, great work. Keep it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice, nice motivating statement there. Great. All mm -hmm. right. So, but now I need what happens if I'm not going fast enough? Electric shock. <laughs> <laughs> we have yet to add that to our software. Oh, your phone let, doesn't do electric shock? I'll let the software know. Something to think know. about for the future. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So I clicked that gear. Oh, I see that. Okay. Yeah. And so, all right. So if I'm doing something, you've told it to, to say great job, um, great work. But if not, that's the if part. Now we're able to say something else. Okay, so I'm gonna click code output again and pull this out. Mm -hmm. And now I'm gonna say. You know, speed it up. Yeah. Git heart. And when I do that, it gives me that cute emoji. So. Sorry. <laughs> All right, there we go. Git heart rate up. And then you could say move faster or anything like that. So there I go. So let us let me make this smaller so you can see the whole program. All right, so repeat while true. If my speed is greater than 1.6, it's going to say great work, keep it up. If not, it's going to say get heart rate up. So we're not actually going to walk, but I can show you what this looks like. I'm going to add a page and then select that measurement again user entered mm -hmm. and there you see message again and if I click start if my program's right it's going to be telling me so it should be saying yeah. speed up since we're not moving yeah All right so and it does. get the heart rate up mm -hmm. because we're, we're standing still now should you start running around the studio we should say that it <laughs> see that it says great work we're not going to have Heidi 
run around the studio. No. We're, we're going to assume that maybe the program is correct. Yeah, but, but let me show you one more thing. So we've and done... there's more. There really is more. <laughs> We've used just the onboard sensor, but what's really awesome about Blockly is it works with all of our PASCO sensors. So I threw the code note on. You folks might have seen this guy before. And I'm going to go back to this code icon piece. Let me see. It hasn't registered she's on yet. Stop. There it is. It took it a second. You see how my Bluetooth illuminated? I do. That's letting me know that there's something that I can connect. And there it is. There's my code node. So I'm going to connect Cody. So now we're connecting your phone to an external sensor. Mm -hmm. So why don't we, when, when I walk, I typically don't have my phone in my hand. So maybe I want a different sort of notification of what my speed is. So I'm, just to show you something real quick. Uh, I've attached this guy on with Velcro. I've got him in his little case. I'm going to go back to code. And now I'm going to click on hardware again. And check that out. There's, oh, a whole, a whole yeah. lot of things now connected because you connected to the external mm -hmm. device. So now I can create a really neat output other than text. So I could do a buzzer if I wanted. I can use my RGB LED array. I can use the 5x5. Five five. Oh, I see. All kinds of things mm -hmm. that you could use as an output to say, hey, need, need to speed it up. Does that have electric shock? Not yet. OK. Coming soon. Coming soon, electric shock. <laughs> All right, so I've pulled these two in just, mm -hmm. just to show you real quick. So if I'm doing good, let's have my green light come on. So let's knock that value to zero on red, leave green at five, zero out the blue. Really mm. fun for color mixing, but let's just keep it um, green and red right now. So if I need to get moving, I want the red light to come on. So I'm just gonna zero those out. So all Heidi is doing is changing the values in the mm -hmm. RGB so that the different colors are showing up and where it we have both text output and we still have the text output. It's still there. She now also has a second output yeah. in the device that she's got on her arm where she's changed the colors. All right, so if it works, when I click start, it should come up red, right? So let's see here. Quick start. There we go. And the red light came on. Telling me that I need mm -hmm. to speed it up. Yep. Wow, that is really terrific. Again, if you were running around the studio, that would turn, <laughs> turn green, green. And this mm -hmm. is a much better indicator. And, and in this case, we are still using the phone as the sensor that's collecting the data that, that's allowing us to actually move forward with that. So that's, that's awesome. That's terrific. Yeah, I think it's beyond cool. It really gets me excited there. Oh, I would be too. And we know that the phone isn't the only device that has onboard mm -hmm. sensors. There, there's lots of things that have onboard sensors. My computer has onboard sensors. Heidi, your iPad has onboard sensors. Yeah. And so you don't necessarily need an input-output device. We do have them. And, uh, and I might also mention for the program that Heidi just wrote, we do have an EKG sensor that could actually monitor That's your EKG, awesome. right? So we can see how fast your heart is going. All right. So... Let me get into my iPad here. I've got it connected. Okay. So I've been told, I hear that we use our devices a little bit too much. Ah, uh, yes. The TikToks. Right, right. Sometimes we need to be able to put those down and, yeah. and not use them. Yeah. I, we got to learn how to separate work and home life right now. So maybe you want to have a family night where everybody's device you can't touch it. So I've created a sleep mode that, let me show you how it works first. Um, let's start. So it's saying sleep, but if I pick it up, what's it tell you? Oh, it says put me down. Mm -hmm. So this is interesting. Mm -hmm. So this is a case where we're actually using coding to solve a problem. Yep. Uh, the problem is the, the phenomena that we are 
far too connected to our devices and we may need something to tell us to put our devices down. So this is neat. How did you do that? Well, let me just show you real quick um, on this slide. I found this great pick and I really wanted to share it. It's really fun. So Great for the holidays. Yeah, your, your cell phones, your iPads, they have what we call a three axis accelerometer within them. So we can measure on the X axis, which is your- Axis? Yep, horizontal. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, you can get Y axis, which is your vertical, and then your Z, which is right at you. Mm -hmm. So how mm -hmm. can I utilize this information in that program I just created? And, and I have used this sometimes with my phone, and, and I will tell you, and you probably have to try this at home, but from my phone, it tells me that the X is moving in this direction. This, this is X. For my phone, Y is moving in this direction, and Z is moving in this direction. So if you were working with your phone and trying to figure out what direction it is, you, you just know you have to kind of figure out which one's the X, mm. which one's the Y, and which one's the Z. Yeah, the figuring out part for folks like JP, who's very logical, he can, he can envision it in his mind palace. But for folks like me, um, I really, I need to see it. I need to understand how it works. And this is another thing that I love about Blockly. So I started a new program and I'm gonna go into sensor data and you see onboard acceleration sensor, mm -hmm. okay? So when I click so that. So where before we were using the GPS and Heidi turned on the GPS sensor, now again, onboard sensor mm -hmm. in her iPad, she's actually connecting to her accelerometer, which is in her device, onboard sensor. So if you wanna visualize what JP just explained with his phone, I'm gonna click X, oops, open that back up, X, Y and Z and turn off the result. I don't need that for oh, this demo. Oh, very nice. So we can see again that your phone's collecting, or in this case, your iPad's collecting the X, Y, and Z acceleration, or it could give you the resultant of all of those combined, which would, which would be the combination of all three of those directions, and you're just picking each one. Yeah, so I'm gonna click the line graph oh, and look, check look that at out. This. this is really nice. Yeah. Now I can see the X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z being collected. So if you wanna see what the data really looks like, this is awesome. So you pick up the iPad or your phone, you click start. So I'm just gonna tilt back and forth. So X, Y, or Z, what's being measured really well right now? Right. You might so, be able to use that data in a program. Yeah, when I'm taking a look at your computer, I'm seeing that the, the X is, is staying fairly consistent, but the Y and the Z in yours is large differences, mm -hmm. very large differences. So I, you're moving back and forth is the Y and the Z. It's right. not the X. But if I tilt to, towards ah, myself look in at a that. way. Okay, now I can ah, see the. You guys are seeing how screen orientations work now, <laughs> which is pretty awesome. So if you're getting dizzy at home, grab onto something. Don't stand <laughs> up while watching this. But but we're definitely able to see how the, how the X is working and what a neat opportunity to yeah. say that the reason the accelerometer is used sometimes in our devices is for screen orientation yes as, as one of the many things that it does and remember guys we're live if you've got any questions about any of the things that we're talking about Heidi is here to answer them I'm here to answer them just get us your questions and we can answer them for you directly right now and Heidi that was some great data so now what do I do with it yeah let's use it so let me show you how I created that sleep program so I'm going to use X and Y because sometimes we pick up our iPad this way, sometimes we pick it up this way. So we have to put both of that into our mm -hmm. program, to, you know, just to make sure we're doing it right. So I'm click on the code icon and let's start with that while true loop again. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to pull out my conditional. Now, this statement's going to be a little different. We're going to call it a compound conditional because there's two things. One or two things either have to occur at the same time or at different times. I am going to build what's gonna look like a long block, but trust me, it's not too tough. I'm gonna to pull out this and, but I want it to say or, and this is why. I'm gonna pull out that conditional block that you saw in our last program. I'm gonna pull them here and here. Oh, I see. Okay, and so I have two different situations. Yeah. So one or the other could occur. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna click hardware again, and you see it kind of resets at resultant here, but I want to do X mm -hmm. As we saw from your data, we're going to be looking only at the X and the Y. Let me pull these out because let's look at the data again real quick. 
Mm -hmm. Am I working with positive or negative integers? Uh, you're working with both. Your, your mm -hmm. numbers, it looks to me, fluctuate between like a negative four and a positive four, roughly, um, in this case, the, on the y-axis. So both, both integers. Mm -hmm. So let me show you how to use another one of our math blocks. I want to use the absolute value of x and y. And that way, I know I'm working with a positive number. I use that drop down again. There's absolute. Oh, that's very clever. So now I don't have to worry if it's a negative mm -hmm. 4 or a positive 4. It's just 4. Yeah, you, I mean, you could do a program like that, but let's simplify it. Mm -hmm. All right, so when the absolute value of x, absolute value of y, and you've got to check here because it goes back to the default. So I'm going to pull out my math block because this is where I'm going to put in the number that triggers. So let's say if ex the absolute value of x is greater than, let's just say 1, mm -hmm. and then do the same over here, greater than 1. So based on the data again, any time mm -hmm. that number in the x or the y is greater than 1, we, we should see something happen because that's what you're saying. You're saying if it's greater than one on the x or the y, what happens? All right, so let's create that little sleep mode put me down. So if it's greater, I'm gonna go to code output to create my message. And again, you could put, you know, family time, however you wanna recall this. And I'm gonna pull that text block out. If it's greater, let's say put me down, And I love the iPad because I can do emojis. I like this little purple devil guy. Put me down. Yeah, I like those emojis too. I notice I try on my computer, I don't have them. Um, but I do notice on my iPad, I do. I think some computers have them, some don't. Well, but and it's, they it's can go online them. and import them. You can cut and paste, which oh, is really okay. cool, oh, into nice. the text output. So have some fun figuring that one out too. All right, so I clicked the gear to add my else. Sorry, I gotta make that a little bit bigger, so. Mm -hmm. So let's say. So we have put me down, so we've already established that condition. Mm -hmm. If it's greater than one in the X or the Y, it's saying, hey, put me down. That, that was to solve our problem. But as a reward for if it's not being touched. It's gonna say else. sleep mode. And let's change to sleepy emojis. Nice. Okay, so okay. let's take a quick look to make sure we got everything the way we want it to. Um, if the absolute value of acceleration x is greater than one or the absolute value of acceleration y is greater than one, it's gonna say put me down. Else, sleep mode. Beautiful. A very simple code solves mm -hmm. a problem. Now how do we see that? So I clicked the code again. Mm -hmm. I need to add a page. Any template's fine. I like the big one. That way you're not sharing any other data points. Select measurement and then user Back entered. that user entered like we'd seen before. You see mm -hmm. message. All right, let's see if we did this right. So start, ah, so okay. far so That's good. sleep mode and put me down, put so me down. So it doesn't matter which no matter, way I tilt. Yeah, the orientation is working, it's saying put me down and back to mm -hmm. sleep mode. So it was actually able to capture that relatively easily. Yeah. Very nice. So this is nice something program. everyone can do right, right now at home. Beautiful, awesome. I absolutely love what you did there. Now let's Beautiful. do something different. Usually it kind of ends with your partner over here, but I think you've got some more you want to share, right? Well, I do, yes, because I, I like the accelerometer. I have used the accelerometer on my phone, and the, the really nice thing with the accelerometer is that you can attach it to different things. You can attach it to a little cart, for example, and get some data from it. So, Heidi, I found this cart sitting on your desk, ah. and mm -hmm. it's just any cart would work with this. Any cart is fine. I just happen to find this one sitting around on your desk, and I'm putting my phone on this cart with this very technical device called a rubber band. <laughs> and look at that. Look what I've just created. I've, well, get the rubber band off the wheel. Look what I've just created. That's pretty cool. I've created a device that can measure the acceleration of this cart. So any cart now has become a high tech device for measuring acceleration. And as I push this cart back and forth, I can receive some different data. In fact, I captured that data. Let me, let me show you what that data looks like. I captured that here. 
here we see it. I hope we see it. Um, here we see the data. And look what I've done, Heidi. I've moved the car back and forth and take a look at my acceleration data. That's pretty cool. And I've got some pretty good data. It's showing both positive and negative numbers, as it should. It shows when things are speeding up. It shows when things are slowing down. And it even shows when it's sitting still and there's no acceleration or no change in its velocity. So you can turn any device uh, into a high-tech device just by using your phone and something like a rubber band and then a little cart. That's pretty nice. That's awesome. And I'm kind of looking at that. You took it off my desk. I did. We're going to tell them? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Them? Sure. No longer a secret. So it looks like something fits into that cart. Right. And so coming up very soon, you need to know that the code node, which, which Heidi has already talked about, and you've seen a tremendous amount about the code node. And if you haven't seen it yet, go back to Pasco Live and look up some of our code node opportunities. But watch what happens here. The code node actually drops right inside of this cart and we're ready to go. We are actually now able to collect some data and so do cool. some things. So you could do it with your phone, you could do it with this device, because this device also has an accelerometer mm -hmm. on board. So yep. I turn it on, I put it in, and now I'm able to start collecting some data. And the nice thing is, Heidi, I did that. I collected some of this data, and take a look at what I have on the screen. This is the data I collected from now the code mm -hmm. node in that cart. That's some really beautiful, smooth oh, data, absolutely. isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, and I, we should add that with Lockley, now with the code node cart, there's two new additional measurements. So we have cart velocity and cart position. So velocity and position on the cart with the code node, a whole lot more that we're going to be telling you about the code node and the code node cart. But just taking a look at what we're doing here and some coding, look at the nice data that I have. And I, I wanted to do this because the, the interesting thing is, you know, if you're out driving or you're out buying a car, that acceleration is so important. And you can have rapid acceleration, you could have slow acceleration, rapid acceleration for like a Porsche, mm -hmm. slow acceleration for like a Ford Pinto, for example, but, but two <laughs> different things. You want to know, are you a Porsche or are you a Pinto? And, and it just depends on how rapid you move it. So look at this data. I did that. I, I did a very rapid start, and you can see my data here with a very sharp mm -hmm. slope there. That's a rapid start. And then you see I kind of did a slow start and have a much gentler slope. Um, and that slope, that rate of acceleration, is what I'm measuring there with the slope. Then, this is, this is really interesting because I'm going to use a highly technical term here for you. You ready? Yeah. What do you call that change in acceleration? That rapid change in acceleration. What do you call a rapid change in acceleration? It starts with a J. Is What's the J, J stand for? for? JP? No, it stands for <laughs> jerk. That's right. It stands for jerk. Absolutely. The change in acceleration is called a jerk. Just hold this for a second there, Heidi, if you would please. So a jerk is that change in acceleration. And when I looked at this, you can see here from my data that I've got a big jerk because that's a rapid change in acceleration. If you want to hold that, Heidi, for me, thank you. Or if you take a look at the data, I can have a little jerk. Big jerk or little jerk. It's a jerk. Now, you might be wondering where I'm going with this. And the answer is into the coding. So let me bring up my Spark View. I want to show you a program that I wrote that uses this information. I'm going to bring up mine here. And let me quickly connect to my code node. Here we are, connecting. And I want to show you what I did. You're not the only one that can code. I'm impressed. What I've done, and look, it's a very easy code. All I said was that depending on that rapid acceleration, if it's above, and I looked at my data, just mm -hmm. like you were looking at your data, if it's above a certain number, that it is a big jerk. If it's a below a certain number, it's a little jerk. And what I did is I repeated this 25 times because I, I didn't want it to go on forever. I just want to know that instant acceleration. Oh, okay. And it works out that 25 times is about half a second. So I'm only capturing half a second of data. So Heidi, hold on to that for a second, okay? And you're going to push this in the, you're going to push this in this direction. I want you to go like that. Okay. Okay, so start here and go in that direction because I'm measuring the positive Y. You see the acceleration yep. of Y here? Okay. So let me then go to my program and get ready and try it. Oop, let's try it again. You gotta be a little more quick. Okay, go. Okay, so right, so it's interesting data that you caught because you actually started and then you slowed down and it caught that. And what did it say? 
a little jerk. Right. So now we've got absolute <laughs> proof, Heidi, that you are indeed just a little jerk. But you can actually measure that with the data that's coming off of the code node, a simple little program that I did here. And whether you're a big jerk or a little jerk or any jerk at all, anybody can do programming. And that's all that's important here. And that's what we're celebrating today yeah. in our hour of code. Yeah, it's been exciting stuff. And so whether you decide to, to work directly with data that comes off of your device here, or the devices that we showed, or you choose to do something like capture data off of any one of our sensors, it's all possible, it's all viable, it's all ready for you today. All you have to do is download the software and get started and get ready to do an hour of code. Awesome stuff? It was great, and we should mention, and we'll share the link, uh, last week we did an hour of code webinar that starts with the basics, kind of what we did today when I did my name, and then moves all the way up into physics applications. And we've got all that stuff mm -hmm. on our website, yeah, correct? We do. So we, we do. can find all of that. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I'm at jkeener at pasco.com. Feel free to contact me. We'll answer your questions. If you'd like to know how to make a purchase of any of this equipment, any of the things that we talked about today, remember the software is free, but if you'd like to make a purchase, then reach out to our salesperson, our our national salesperson, Isaac Martin, who is able to help you. And if any time you have questions, we're here to help you. I want to thank you, Heidi, for joining us Thanks today. Thanks for having me. I want to thank you folks for joining us today. And as always, we wish you the best of luck, great teaching, and good day.